Hi, and welcome back to Les's lab. In this episode, we're going to take a look at helium neon lasers. As at this time, we've got three of the things. Uh, one's red, one's yellow, and one's green, so they're all different colors, uh, which is pretty cool to see. Uh, later on, towards the end of this episode, we're going to coax two wavelengths out of a single helium neon laser tube at the same time. So let's stick these on the bench and take a look. So here are my three helium neon lasers on the bench. Uh, these are all actually out of confocal microscopes, uh, one way or the other. A couple of these came off eBay, and one of them I bought off Mike from Mike's Electric Stuff. Um, so I'll just go through from back to front. I've got uh, an 11 milliwatt 632.8 nanometer or red uh, helium neon laser. Uh, the tube for this is you know a little over two feet long. Um, next up, we've got a yellow 594 nanometer uh, laser that lasers at 2.2 milliwatts. Um, this is yellow or sort of an amber yellow. This came from Mike at Mike's Electric Stuff. Um, he still had it available from a teardown he did back in 2016 on a confocal microscope, uh, and I'll link that in down below as well. Um, when he sold me this, it was on the provision that it probably wouldn't last very long. The power supply was a little bit flaky. Uh, the output transistor had been replaced a couple of times. Um, so I'm actually using my own uh, homemade power supply in the background there to drive this today. Uh, there was an initial, uh, additional problem as well. Um, He'd replaced the ballast resistor in the front there, uh, so all helium neon uh, lasers, I did, did a previous video about this, they all have a ballast resistor. Um, a lot of commercial ones also have a second ballast resistor in the rear um, to keep the entire tube itself, including the cathode, floating above ground potential. Uh, and the reason, is, the reason for this is to actually make them easier to start. Um, so if you imagine we apply a high voltage to it, if we've got one end grounded, uh, we might not get an even distribution of charge all the way along the glass envelope in order to start the tube. So what we do is we split the ballast resistance. We have one in the front, uh, one in the back, so it like raises uh, the entire tube above ground. Um, it, so it turned out the, uh, the rear ballast had also failed, which was probably what was responsible for it being difficult to start, difficult to run. It was, you know, it'd run for a little while and then wink out. Uh, so that was replaced and it now seems um, relatively stable. And last but not least, we've got a 543 nanometer or bright green helium neon laser. Uh, this laser is at 1.16 milliwatts. Um, it's actually interesting how this works out. So well, these, these tubes are all the same length, um, but we've got 11 milliwatts in the red. We've got 2.2 milliwatts um, for our yellow, and then we've got 1.16 milliwatts for our green. And the reason behind this is the relative gain of those um, individual lines differs quite significantly. Uh, we're all very, very familiar with uh, 632.8. Um, it's very, very easy to get it to laze. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it used to be common in like barcode scanners and uh, laser displays, stuff like that. Uh, the other wavelengths are a little bit more difficult to, uh, to get them to laze in the first place. Um, yellow is a really, really odd one. Um, if, if, you, if you look at the patents, like the inside of the bore of the tube has to be ground all the way down the entire length of the tube, which is kind of uh, expensive. Um, and the reason for that is it's to uh, depopulate um, the laser level as you're sort of going along. Uh, the green ones, from what I understand, require a specific isotope of neon um, to even work. Um, so yeah, these, these two are you know, relatively rare. It is possible to get orange ones. Uh, I've never seen one in the wild. Um, all I've got really are what I have here. Um, but they're really, really cool. So let's, let's have a look at the colors. So at the back here, um, we've got our red. And we can see the reflection off the optical table and it's, it's quite clearly red. Uh, next up, we've got our uh, yellow. Um, it, it actually honestly looks really quite amber to me. It seems like almost orange, um, but yeah, pretty cool. And then we've got our green right at the front there. Excellent. I suppose um, we'll do a gratuitous smoke shot because why not? Absolutely fantastic. So each of these has been tested today with my coherent laser check, so I know uh, exactly what they're putting out. It'd be kind of interesting to run some sp uh, spectroscopy experiments with these. Um, so all, all three of these um, are capable of ac exciting, you know, various molecules to uh, fluorescence. So, um, you know, and we can, we can actually sort of, if we wanted to, we could find a dye, for example, that um, only was excited by a very, very narrow region, like you know, around about 594 nanometers, and we could pick it out with the, uh, with the yellow laser, for example. Uh, we could do the same thing with the red, we could do the same thing with the green. Uh, there are some dyes, uh, for example, that will fluoresce in the infrared, 
um, and are excited by red light, for example. Um, so yeah, pretty cool stuff. I don't think I'm actually going to go ahead and build like a confocal microscope or anything with this with this kit, but it's really really cool nonetheless. So a little bit of further explanation on these. Um, I mean, I've, I've said before, you know, like uh, 633 or 632.8 nanometers is really, really common and you can get other wavelengths. Uh, we saw in a previous video um, where I measured the uh, light output from the sides of a, a, a helium neon laser that there were many, many other wavelengths available. Um, only some of them are actually capable of lasing. Um, I think the first helium neon laser lays at something like three odd microns, like way into the infrared. And then they found that by putting magnets all the way along the bore, they could sort of coax um, red emission out of it. Um, in order to get the other wavelengths to laze, we have to be sort of really, really careful about the kind of mirrors that we use in these. So in each of these cases, uh, they use dielectric coated mirrors, and those mirrors are precisely um, tuned to a specific wavelength. So in the red helium neon laser, we have a, a high reflection and output, output coupler um, that reflect really, really intensely uh, in and around the red, um, but you won't reflect really much in the way of green, won't reflect much in the way of yellow. Uh, that's not to say if we got a broadband mirror, um, you know, a pair of broadband mirrors and replace them either side of the red helium neon laser that we suddenly expect the other lines to laze, that just doesn't happen either. Um, the yellow and green, for example, are very, very weak. Um, and if we had a broadband mirror, um, the, the red line would laze and then it would laze at the expense of all the other lines. Uh, so it would like, steal energy out of them. Um, so yeah, in the, in the other two cases here where we have the yellow and the green, we've got special mirrors in there that are precisely tuned, you know, in the case of yellow to reflect 594 nanometers and in the case of green to reflect 543. Um, as I said, or I think I said earlier on in the video, uh, there are other tricks as well to get these colors to, to actually pop out. Um, green requires isotopically pure neon in order to uh, laze the green line and for the yellow uh, you've got to do some funky stuff with the bore. Uh, the entire bore has to be ground uh, down its entire length um, in order to uh, depopulate the laser level you know by sort of collision with the walls. Um, but yeah really really cool uh, lasers for sure. Um, let's have one more shot of the smoke because everybody loves laser beams in smoke right? Awesome. In fact, let's get a shot from across the room. So here's a gratuitous beam shot from across the room. Uh, we've got the red here, and then we've got our yellow, and then we've got our green. So I've just stuck a post-it note over the other side of the room there, uh, mostly so the camera has something to focus on. Uh, lasers tend to confuse it. Um, so yeah, so from uh, left to right there, we can see our green, our yellow, and our red spot. Awesome. So I have set up here um, another green helium neon laser. This is a vintage one. This is uh, manufactured in March 1988 in West Germany. This only outputs 0 0.3 milliwatts at 543 nanometers. Um, and we're going to perform a little experiment with this. Because this is so old, the manufacturers really haven't taken great care to make sure that all other wavelengths are actually excluded from oscillating in the laser. So what I've done here is I've set up a very high reflector in front of the laser that's actually going to bounce the light straight back into the laser. Um, obviously you wouldn't want to do this with like a diode laser or a YAG laser, you'd probably destroy it, right? Uh, but you know, a helium neon laser, we can get away with it. In the middle I have a, a quartz plate and that's reflecting some of the light through a diffraction grating onto the uh, paper at the back there. Let's have a gratuitous smoke shot so we can see the beam paths, why not? Fantastic, so we can see that the beam is being reflected back towards the, the laser. If we pay particular attention to the paper at the back there, if I just tweak this, we can see the 633 line oscillating. Um, it comes and goes, and um, the two wavelengths will compete with each other and the tubes in a sort of warm-up phase. In fact, this is actually working pretty well. So we can see our green on the left and our red on the right there. I say it blinks in and out. You know, air currents and all sorts are going to sort of change the, the length of the cavity and cause it to cease um, oscillating or to begin oscillating, but it's really, really cool to see. So yeah, absolutely fantastic. We're getting two wavelengths at once out of this thing. Um, legend has it that there's a particular brand of tube uh, that you can buy in the States 
um, REO tubes, so it's research electro optics. Uh, and some of those, especially the yellow ones, um, you can actually get them to oscillate on an orange line, you can get the 633 line, you can get the 650 line all at the same time, which would be really, really um, nice to see indeed. Um, unfortunately, not managed to get hold of one of those, but if anybody knows where I can get such a tube, um, stick it in the comments. Uh, I'd love to get my hands on it and have a go at, uh, at doing this. Thanks for watching this episode of Leslie's Lab. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time.